Jaron Duran is here and he looks like a completely different player. Right now, he's playing insane baseball. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. And as we all know, this Red Sox offense has been pretty good to open up the season. We've seen a lot of really great performances from players who we didn't really expect really great performances from to open up this year. But I don't think anyone who has surprised anyone more than Jaron Duran. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to break down just how insane Jaron Duran has been since being called up to the major leagues. We're going to talk about what that means for this Red Sox team. And and we're going to talk about whether or not this success is sustainable and how he can sustain it. But before we get into Jaron Duran's statistics, we need to talk about someone else who's lighting the world on fire right now, Masataka Yoshida. Foco, as you know, makes limited edition bobbleheads throughout the MLB season. And to celebrate Masataka Yoshida's first month in the major leagues, they are releasing a limited edition Masataka Yoshida rookie bobblehead. Now, these are very, very special bobbleheads because only 96 of them will be made. And to get yours and pre order your Masataki Yoshida bobblehead today, go ahead and click the link in the description below to get started. You aren't going to miss this opportunity because there's simply not going to be another one. So click the link in the description below to get your limited edition Masataki Yoshida bobblehead. Thank you very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. So far this year, Jaron Duran has played in 13 games for the Red Sox since getting the call up after the Adam Duvall injury. Now, I'm recording this on Monday, meaning that these statistics are probably skewed just a little bit after his game last night. So these may be a tiny bit off, but at the time of this recording, Jaron Duran has 53 plate appearances, 48 at bats, totaling a 396 average, a 415 on base percentage, a 646 slug, and a 1.061 OP which gives him a 184 OPS plus, meaning that in these 13 games, again, at the time of recording, he is 84% more productive at the plate than the average player in baseball. On top of that too, Jaron Duran also has 10 RBIs currently. He has a grand slam home run. He also has nine doubles, which puts him tied in eighth in all of Major League Baseball for doubles. And you got to remember that a lot of these guys had more than double the time to get to that same amount of doubles as Jaron Duran has had. And he has 19 total hits at the Major League level this year. Now those statistics on their own are absolutely insane. Jaron Duran is tearing the cover off of baseballs lately, but it's not just the sheer amount of hits Jaron Duran is getting early on this year that's impressing a lot of people. It's his plate approach as well. Let me explain why. And just a heads up, we're about to get real nerdy here. We're going to start with his K percentage. His K percentage or strikeout rate is the lowest it's been in his entire career. Right now, it is currently sitting at 22.6%, which is about 5% lower than it was last year, 13% lower than it was in 2020. 21. He's being much more selective at the plate so far in the small sample size in 2023, and it's leading to much more productive results. And when he is making contact with baseballs in 2023, he is connecting much better than he ever has in his career. His current hard hit rate is 52.6%. That is the percentage of times when he hits the ball that it is over 95 miles an hour. For it to be over half of his hits is insane. Comparing that to last year where he just had a 38% hard hit rate, that is more than a 14% increase. His barrel percentage has also increased from 7.7% in 2022 to 13.2% in 2023, a little over a 4.5 percentage increase. His average exit velocity has gone up from 89.3 last year to 91.7, which may not seem like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but for his average to have gone up almost an entire mile and a half since last year is really impressive. His batted ball profile is also completely different this year. He has gone from last year having over 50% of his batted balls, balls he has put in play, being grounders to only 31%. That is basically cutting the amount of grounders he had last year directly in half. He also, during this same time, doubled the percentage of times that he was hitting line drives. So he's cut down on the ground balls and he's increased the amount of times he's hitting line drives. And we're seeing just how productive he can be when he's putting the ball in the air. Even his launch angle has increased by 
almost double what it was last year. He went from 7.6 degree launch angle on average in 2022 to a 16.2 degree launch angle in 2023. Again, you're seeing him get under the ball more often than we saw last year. Last year, it felt like he was trying to run out grounders as opposed to hit them straight back up the middle. And this year, what we're seeing is a lot more line drives, a lot more fly balls. And so far, it's working out really well. Basically, what I'm saying here in a really nerdy way is that Jaron Duran has increased the potential of every single aspect, basically, of his hit tool between last year and this year. But it's not just the hitting improvements that have impressed people. It's also been his defense as well. Last year, coming out of 2022, Jaron Duran finished with a negative seven total defensive run saved in the outfield through 13 games this year, which again, I know is a very small sample size. That number is zero, which may not sound great because it's not yet positive, but that is at league average and it is seven runs higher than it was last year. So the big question here is how? How were these improvements made and are these improvements sustainable? If the question we're asking here is if Jaron Rand can maintain a 390-ish average with an over 400 on base percentage the entirety of the year, the simple answer is no, right? That's basically almost humanly impossible. Unless your name is Ted Williams or Tony Gwynn, Jaron Rand's probably not going to hit around that the entire season. But how big of a regression are we going to see? Is it going to be that massive regression we saw last year after about a month in the major leagues? Or is this something different? Because one thing I want to point out with Jaron Rand, we're not not seeing this average due to a ton of fluky type hits, right? He is getting those fluke hits, but it has a lot to do with his new plate approach, and it has a lot to do with his new stance as well. This preseason, we broke down Jaron Duran's new stance during spring training, so if you want a really in-depth analysis as to his new stance, you could take a look at that video. But so far this season, what we've seen from Jaron Duran and his new stance is what his new stance does is it simplifies things, right? It's not complicated. He doesn't have to have his hands in some funky position. There's no huge leg kick. It's allowing him to rely on his instincts, be short to the ball, and not focus so much on power or specifically ground balls or anything like that, just purely making contact and allowing his natural strength to send those bad boys flying, right? That's sort of what we're seeing with Jaron Duran's stance. So part of whether or not Jaron Duran will regress going forward in 2023, well, actually how much he will regress going forward in 2023 is going to have to do with whether or not he can maintain this stance over a long period of time. And that should be fairly easy to do because like I said, it is a very simplified new batting stance. And I also think a big part of whether or not Jaron Duran can sustain his success throughout the 2023 season is going to have to do with confidence. When baseball players, specifically hitters, are extremely confident at the plate, you can tell, right? You can tell how comfortable a player is in with his role on this team. And you can tell how comfortable a player is with themselves. For the last couple of years, what we've been seeing from Jaron Duran is the exact opposite opposite of confidence, right? He was never really comfortable with where he was on this team. He was never really comfortable with himself and his ability. That looks like it's going in the complete opposite direction this year. And we're just seeing just how excitable those results can be when Jaron Duran is a comfortable with himself at the plate and on the field and two comfortable with himself in his role on this team and with the team in general. One of the big things I've noticed so far this year, and it's not just me, it's everyone who's noticed from Jaron Duran is he's put a lot of credit into his early success this 2023 season on his teammates, right? In a very specific interview after the game where he hit a grand slam, he talked about this. He talked about how he's been felt welcomed in this clubhouse to be himself and be who he really is and still be welcomed into the clubhouse. He specifically mentioned guys like Justin Turner, Christian Royal, Alex Verdugo, and more. And these are the type of guys who are allowing him to build that confidence at the major league level that he did not feel like he had the last two years he was up here. So if I'm talking about whether or not this is all sustainable, I'm looking at two things. One, can he maintain his approach at the plate where all of these statistics are much better than what we've seen in the past? And two, can he be confident? Can he continue this confidence throughout entirety of the season? And how much of a backing does the clubhouse have behind him? And honestly, I think the specifically the clubhouse is going to be perfectly
perfectly fine, but I think all three of these things are extremely doable. Again, do I think Jaron Wren is going to have a season where he hits over 350 with over a 400 on base percentage? No, I don't. But I do think as we see that regression, we're not going to see as much regression as we've seen in the past from Jaron Wren, where he went from super hot last year to dead silent in just a couple of weeks. I think we're going to see a gradual regression here back to around 270, 280, and that's still a very productive player on this Red Sox team. Now, the biggest question, in my opinion, surrounding whether or not Jaron Duran can sustain this level of success is simply playing time, right? We need to take a look at his statistics two months, three months from now, when we have a much larger sample size. Does this plate approach where he's hitting the ball harder, where he's taking less strikeouts, and where he's putting the ball in the air much more, does that approach stay the same? It's all going to come down to whether or not Jaron Duran can do this over a longer period of time. And to me, the biggest question with that is will he get the time to do that you have Adam Duvall coming back right what are you going to do in center field if Jaron Durant's hitting the way he's hitting still in June July and you've got Adam Duvall coming back who was absolutely insane for you the first couple of weeks of this season then you add in the fact that there's a possibility Trevor Story joins you before too long after that where do you put Kike Hernandez who's no longer at shortstop do you try to fit him back in the outfield somewhere right this could come down to simply Jaron Durant not being able to to get enough playing time or variables that Jaron Rand simply cannot control. So right now, Jaron Rand can't do a whole lot to prove that he can be, hey, I can be an everyday player. I can be a role player on this Red Sox team over an extended period of time because those variables are simply out of his hands. What he can do right now is keep focusing, keep producing the way he's producing and see if he can get to a point by the time Adam Duvall comes back where he's playing too well for the Red Sox to take him out of the lineup. Either way, though, what we've seen from Jaron Duran so far has been absolutely insane, and it's come at the perfect time. With the Duvall injury and some guys in this lineup slumping early, he has helped mend that gap between offense and production until these guys have started to get going, and hopefully he could just make this team even better. But at the end of the day, he has just been a ton of fun to watch. But I want your opinion as well. Let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think of Jaron Duran's insane start to the 2023 campaign? Do you think it's sustainable? Do you think there are legitimate differences? between his game this year and last year and finally do you see him having a place on this team in a regular role throughout the 2023 season let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below about the early days of jaron duran as always if you made it to the end of this video do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe and that like button helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me don't forget if you do want a chance at this limited time masataki yoshida bobblehead remember there are only 96 being made click the link in the description below to head to FOCO and get yours today. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.